Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for Saturday, August the 13th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peterson. Well, it's been a long, hot summer, but it looks like we do have some changes on the way. Maybe just capping off the heat a little bit, but it'll be welcome relief. Sky came imagery this morning. There's a look at uh, some contrails across the sky at Tuscaloosa and some high cirrus clouds. And then I couldn't resist this shot of Decatur and the Tennessee River and the sun rising up there. On our surface map this morning, we're looking at a frontal boundary off to our north and a fairly strong uh, low pressure area moving through the Great Lakes. And that should actually trail a front through here. And while we won't see a dramatic air mass change, it does look like we're going to see some drier air in the upper atmosphere. One of the reasons for that is that uh, we see this trough. Now, last weekend I talked about the possibility of this happening. It looks like it is going to happen. But the troughiness is going to develop over the eastern half of the country, and that should give us a northwesterly flow, bring in some drier air, and reduce our chances for showers during the daytime. But it looks like overnight tonight we might see a pretty good chance for some showers. Once again, not everybody is going to get wet. Heat still with the eastern half of the country, but notice over there in the northern Rockies, we're seeing some temperatures that are at least getting down into the 50s, and isn't that a welcome relief, I'm sure, and that uh, cooler air should spread into and across the northern tier of the United States with some drier air across our area. Drier, that is dew points at least dropping down to around 60 degrees. Notice dew points this morning around anywhere from 66 to 71, depending on exactly where you are in north or central Alabama. Uh, temperatures, uh, once again, riding primarily in the lower 70s, which is where we have been quite a lot. The northwesterly flow will create some MCSs, and you can see them being reflected with the QPF, and then uh, some rain down our way, but not a great deal. Ahead of that little trough that's moving across the Great Lakes area, we see a slight risk extending from, uh, looks like, uh, the extreme southern tip of uh, Lake Huron down across uh, parts of Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois into Kentucky. Day two, that shifts off to the mid-Atlantic states, extending from about Savannah all the way up to uh, just south of New York City. And the tropics have become quite a bit more active. Uh, there's a look at the overall uh, picture of the Atlantic Basin. Of course, we have Franklin on the board now, but Franklin, no threat to land. And actually, uh, number one and number three appear to not be any kind of problems. Number two, however, there is the computer model run for number two, Storm 93, and um, that one uh, bears some watching because, of course, the projections are coming into the Leeward Islands and then coming into the, uh, possibly coming into the Eastern Caribbean. So we'll be watching that one. That one has the uh, smallest chance of becoming a tropical storm in the next 48 hours, but it is moving into an area where conditions may uh, be more favorable for some slow development. All right, here's the 06Z GFS model run, and there's our trough coming across uh, just to the west of Lake Michigan. And uh, that trough is going to be moving into the western parts, uh, pardon me, the eastern parts of the Great Lakes uh, on Sunday. And of course, what that means is that we see a front that will be coming uh, across uh, as a large high pressure area develops in the mid. Uh, West area, and that should bring in some drier air with that northwesterly flow. And you can see the northwesterly flow really sharpens up on Monday. So look for a much cooler morning. That is, temperatures getting down into the 60s, uh, perhaps even in some locations the upper 50s. And uh, of course, with that, we'll see much fewer chances for any uh, rain. And uh, but that'll be okay with at least a little bit drier air. Returning to the upper atmosphere on Tuesday, you can see that the troughiness stays over the East Coast, um, and we still have some strong traveling weather systems, one there in uh, the South Central Canada. Uh, that one migrates a little bit further to the uh, East on Thursday, and we're still in that northwesterly flow pattern, but I think that even with that northwesterly flow pattern, we'll at least return to the lower 90s. The troughiness kind of stays with us into Friday, so once again we stay with that northwesterly flow with the ridge off uh, to the west. I'm sure Texas doesn't like that, 
And uh, that means uh, possibly another front coming our way on uh, Friday as we see uh, the rain possibilities pick up a little bit uh, as we get into Thursday and Friday. Then on Saturday, a week from today, we see that the ridge still there to the west of us, and we see that uh, we're still under a bit of troughiness, so that northwesterly flow stays with us. Going out into voodoo country, uh, the, the actual trough seems to weaken somewhat by the 24th, but it stays uh, a weakness over the southeastern U.S., which means uh, we should see at least daily showers with that kind of pattern. And then finally, at the end of the period, the 28th, uh, 372 hours out, we see once again the troughiness returns. So that certainly means that there's no sign of any ex uh, extreme heat coming our way. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted tomorrow morning by 7.30 or 8. In the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful Saturday and Godspeed. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see All of the places close to me They're all part of all the best things about home Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.